Welcome back everybody. We are here again today at Coastal Seafoods. We are outside on this beautiful day, getting ready to do some grilling of this absolutely beautiful, look at that, shoreline wild salmon. This is the stuff here. You know, we've talked about this before. This is from our good friends up in Pelican, Alaska. This stuff is awesome, perfect for the grill, and we've got it on feature this week. So we're gonna be talking about this today grilling it up pretty simply uh, like we like to do. Again, we want to keep fish that's this beautiful, pretty pristine. So we're going to give this just a simple go on the grill using a technique that I like very much. We do this in our grilling classes if you've ever taken one of those. Uh, today we're going to be using the cedar plank. So we're going to be doing some really nice cedar plank salmon. I've had these soaking for a while. It's always best to do overnight if you can. Um, that's going to help the wood from catching on fire. Hopefully these have soaked long enough to where I don't have to worry about that too much. Uh, but yeah, should be great. Again, super simple. We're going to do some roast veggies with it. Very nice. And we're going to glaze it with some more of this Ashman House uh, seafood marinade. Now this is the apricot maple glaze. This is great with salmon. Super easy. Uh, if you were watching a few weeks ago, we used the Japanese variety on a different preparation, which worked really nice. Um, did a nice marinated fish with that. So today we're going to use this. This is nice and sticky. It's going to glaze that fish really well. It's hopefully going to caramelize up a little bit um, and add just a nice sticky sweetness to that salmon, which is always a really good pairing. So let's go ahead and get this started. I've got my grill heated up here. We're doing pretty good on in terms of temperature. So what I want to do is go ahead, drop my board down. And I'm gonna get my salmon on. Before I do that, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of salt first. I'm just gonna season it from up top, like so. Get a nice little coating, I'll show you there, of salt on my salmon. And then I'm gonna take this salmon and I'm gonna put it right down on that plank. So people who have never tried the cedar plank technique before are always, uh, Again, when we do this in class, they're always shocked at how much flavor this fish winds up picking up from that plank. It's pretty impressive uh, and super delicious. Um, again, very, very easy. But what I'm gonna do now is I've got that glaze here ready, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit my salmon with that. I'm just gonna kind of drizzle it over the top and let it just sort of drape itself over the salmon. Just like so. Perfect. Now what I'm gonna do is I got a little fresh clack, cracked black pepper which I'm gonna put right on the top. And this is gonna create kind of a nice sticky peppery crust, which is exactly what I want to have happen here. Uh, the other thing that I've got is I've got some potatoes that I've just sort of parboiled. So these are mostly cooked already, but I'm gonna grill them off to just kind of finish them get them that nice kind of smoky flavor. I've tossed them in just a little bit of vegetable oil and salt. And I'm gonna get them on here like so. And again, just get them nice and toasty. Now what happens with the fish is as that board heats up, it creates steam from all the water that's inside it. And that steam is infused with all that cedar flavor and it just imparts directly into the fish. It's super beautiful, really, really nice. Uh, and I'm gonna throw some asparagus on as well. This is just some really basic asparagus, nothing crazy. I'm gonna toss that right onto the grill, like so. And then, right over the top, I'm gonna put some shallots on top. And those shallots are just gonna kind of warm and heat and hopefully infuse some of that asparagus with a little bit of that. I'm gonna drizzle it with a little bit of this yuzu uh, olive oil that we carry. This is really nice stuff, great for grilling. So just go ahead and hit it with a little bit of that. And then I'm gonna tap it with a little bit of salt. Perfect, we'll get the back of these potatoes as well. And lastly, I've got some lemon wheels that I'm gonna throw on here and get these grilling. Now this should all go fairly quickly. 
Go ahead and close the lid. And I'm gonna be cooking this salmon really on just the one side. Um, and it's gonna steam all the way around. So we'll wind up cooking all the way through, which is really great. Again, I'm using this uh, marinade stuff. These marinades are great. Um, they don't have a whole lot of extra ingredients in them, which is why I like using them. In fact, there's no high fructose corn syrup or anything in here. Uh, really, the ingredients are apricot preserves, orange juice, maple syrup, mustard, water, lime, and spices. So you can see, uh, same with the Bloody Mary mix that I used yesterday. Um, very clean products. Uh, we like to carry as clean of products as we can here. So really, really nice stuff. Again, make it nice and sticky and caramelized, be really delicious. And then also this yuzu oil, this is great stuff. Um, I use this a lot. If you've taken our Spanish classes, you've seen me use this. I use this in our date night class. Um, this is just a great product. Uh, most olive oils that you get that have been flavored, uh, a lot of times you see like an orange olive oil or a lemon olive oil, things like that. Uh, and what happens is they flavor those using extracts from the fruits, which creates that kind of flavor. Uh, however, this olive oil is a little bit different because they don't use extracts. They actually, when they're pressing the olive pits to get the oil, they also press the yuzu peel right along with it. So you're getting the straight oils from the peel and the pits that combine together to create a really just nice product. This is really good stuff. Uh, we also have a smoked olive oil that we carry by the same brand, Omed. Again, a Spanish company, really great. Uh, maybe you've seen, we've got a video up on our YouTube page with the owner that we shot last time they were in town. Um, that's very cool, it talks all about his process. Very green, um, most of their farm is either solar powered or powered by burning off the brush from their olive bushes, so very cool. Uh, and we really like to support them. Again, super great product, really delicious. Great for dressings, finishing, all sorts of different stuff. So highly recommend in case you didn't notice. Uh, but super, super delicious. Uh, this is cooking off nice. I can see like some of the steam and the smoke starting to come out, which is great. That fish is starting to cook round, which is exactly what I want. And I'm just gonna check my potatoes. See how we're doing here. We're getting some good grill marks on them, which is Again, exactly what I want to have happen. The other thing I want to do, almost forgot, is I got a sprig of rosemary here that I just dipped in a little bit of vegetable oil. And I'm going to put this right on top of the salmon. And that's also going to work to infuse that salmon with that rosemary flavor. So again, it's going to bring kind of a lot of nice aromas to the party. And when you're grilling this, your neighbors are going to wonder what is going on because the smell that comes off this grill is unbelievable. Between the cedar plank and that rosemary, you just get this aroma that perfumes everything. Uh, it's absolutely incredible, uh, and I love it. Again, when we do this for our grilling class, people are always really impressed with how much flavor is imparted into that salmon. And it's such a natural flavor pairing, that woodsy, uh, sort of campfire flavor uh, from the cedar that really infuses into the meat of the salmon. It just goes super well together. It's really, really beautiful, really, really nice. And again, we've just got some of that sweet, sticky sort of marinade on there to sort of caramelize again and just add a little bit of sweetness, which helps accentuate some of those natural flavors in the salmon as well. So everything that we're doing is really working in benefit of the salmon. We're not hiding the salmon. Uh, with anything, we're really just using sort of natural flavors that help to uh, bring out that true salmon flavor, which is really, really beautiful. Um, this is going to be great. I'm looking forward to this very, very much. Uh, and those grilled lemons, too. Grilled lemons is such a great way to add a little extra flavor into your dish. So I'm going to check. It's like a little bit of flame there. Go ahead and flip my lemons. It's looking good. I'm gonna add a few more little lemon pieces that I'm gonna to this that I'm gonna just squeeze kind of over the top. And because it's pretty hot, I'm actually gonna move my salmon off the top there. And I'm gonna put it on the top rack and let it kind of go. Uh, again, this is gonna turn out to be really, really nice absolutely beautiful let's see what we got here so what I'm gonna do make 
sure my flame is not too in, out of control there. Sometimes the boards will catch a little bit, it's fine. Again, just move them off the direct heat, off, and it'll do its thing. Um, if it gets too out of control, you can always hit it with a little water. It'll be fine. Um, but again, soaking them overnight is really gonna help prevent that from happening. So that's definitely something that you're gonna wanna do. Um, you can soak, the cedar planks are nice, we do carry these. Uh, you can soak them in water overnight. Um, people sometimes will soak them in like apple juice or cider overnight as well, which adds that sort of apple-y flavor to everything, which is also very, very nice. Um, something you can do very, very easily to add just a little bit more sweetness and a little bit more aroma to everything. Because a dish like this is as much about the aroma and the smell and the perfume as it is anything else. Uh, so it's really, really nice. See how we're doing here, looking pretty good. That salmon is looking really nice. Let's check those potatoes again. Oh yeah, those are looking good. And you see it's getting nice and blistered here. It's exactly what I'm looking for. It's that beautiful color. And these are just the fingerling potatoes that we carry. Um, they are a tri-color fingerling. So there's red, there's the normal gold, and then there's the purple. So a lot of different kind of flavors and textures and things going on here, which is exactly what we want. Beautiful, that asparagus is cooking nicely. Let's see, I'm gonna add a little bit of water to that. Just to sort of cool down my flame. Just like so. And we're good. So again, not much to it. Just sort of managing and mitigating that temperature and that flame as it goes on. We're using a uh, gas grill here, obviously. This would work great on a charcoal grill. Absolutely no problem. And I'm gonna use actually this sauce also to finish the dish, just as a little finishing sauce around the plate. Um, so you get a little bit more of that sweet apricot flavor, which is really, really nice. Yeah, this is good stuff. And very, very simple to do. We are nearing done. I think what I wanna do is just get a little bit more color on the face of those potatoes. Then I'll go ahead and flip them just to finish. Again, the potatoes were mostly cooked through already. Uh, again, I did parboil them for a few minutes just until they were starting to get tender. And then I pulled them and dried them off uh, so that I could grill them on here and get, add that, again, that smoky flavor and get a little bit of that grilled char on there. Just something really nice. Oh yeah. Well, that salmon is looking fantastic. It's getting there. Oh yeah, these potatoes ready to flip for sure. Just the beautiful golden brown. You know, and in terms of time, it's gonna depend on how hot you've got your grill. Check out my lemons. Oh yeah, those are looking nice. And I'll show you what we're gonna do with the lemons here in just a bit. Nice charred little lemon wheels going on. The asparagus is getting nice and wilty. So are those shallots on top. Again, really nice. Close this, give it a few more, a few more minutes. In fact, maybe what I'm gonna do is hit the asparagus, which is a little about black pepper. Potatoes as well. Now, sometimes when I'm cooking over direct heat, we, I get asked this a lot um, when it comes to using pepper. Sometimes I like to put pepper on a little bit, like maybe the halfway point or whatever, because pepper, uh, especially if you're using really high heat, can scorch and can add a little bit of a bitter flavor to things. So I don't always put it on right away. Like if I'm doing a steak, uh, like you saw us on Friday, we cooked up all those beautiful steaks that we're carrying now. You could do a little steak and salmon dinner, a nice little surf and turf. On Friday, we did the steak with the lobster and the crab legs. We went nuts, did a whole bunch of stuff with uh, our good friend Christine from over in our wholesale. Uh, really cool and we do carry those steaks now they are all online so you can check those out uh, but when I'm doing steaks usually what I'll do um, is just salt the steak right before I cook it or a little bit ahead and I'll get it seared off start cooking and then again about the halfway point is where I'll sort of add my pepper or even at the end um, then you get that fresh floral pep pepper flavor without running the risk of it burning which is something we don't want to have happen. Because again, just like garlic, it can add sort of that astringent flavor to whatever you're cooking. So 
uh, with the salmon, it's a little different because I put it on top. It's got all that glaze to kind of help protect it. So it'll be all right um, where it's not going face down on the grill or anything like that, where it's coming in contact with direct heat. It's got all the steam around it, so it'll keep it just fine. So let's go ahead and check out how we're looking. That salmon is very, very nearly cooked through. Feels great. And that rosemary is starting to char up around the edges, which is again, exactly what we want because we really want that to infuse and perfume the fish. Oh yeah, these lemons are grilling up nicely. Exactly what I want. Just beautiful. And the potatoes looking really, really good. Asparagus looking really, really good. We are just about done here. In fact, I think we are ready to start pulling stuff off and start plating. So I'm gonna move some things out of the way here. I'm gonna grab my plate. I'm gonna set right here, open up the grill so you can kind of see. Got my plate, got all my stuff, got my trusty spatula, I got my beautiful sunny day, got my hot grill. Everything here is looking great. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to start with my asparagus. I'm going to go ahead and just scoop this up. Set that on my plate, like so. Then I'm going to remove this. Actually, I'm going to take this grilled lemon here with my tongs. I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to squeeze that right over the salmon. So I'm going to get that grilled lemon flavor infused in that salmon a little bit as well. And I'm going to take the salmon off of, off of the plank, like so, set it right on top of my asparagus. Then I'm going to take some of these potatoes, I'm going to put them right around that asparagus, get some of the reds, the yellows, the purples. And we can just get kind of a nice mix going on here. Really nice. Beautiful. Right in the middle. Then let's take some of these caramelized lemon wheels. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to take my sauce. Again, just a little bit of this extra glaze. And I'm just going to drizzle some of this around the plate. Just to add a little bit of that flavor back in, get everything sort of nice and paired with each other. Beautiful. And a little bit of that yuzu oil again. I'm gonna to use to just kind of finish the plate here. Again, this is gonna go with all that nice charred lemon flavor really, really well. And let's go ahead and garnish with a few of these grilled lemons. So, and there we go. We have ourselves a really fantastic, easy to do. Let's get these potatoes where they can stay warm without overcooking. Same with our lemon. And then I will show you absolutely gorgeous plate of salmon look at that we got that rosemary we've got those grilled lemons we got those grilled potatoes we've got the grilled asparagus and the shallots all of that with that sweet sweet and sticky apricot maple glaze a little bit of grilled lemon this is a backyard winner i promise uh definitely something worth making again we've got the salmon on feature this is our friends at shoreline wild uh, we've talked a lot about them in the past. Um, everything they catch is all hook and line. Um, up in Alaska, they send it directly to us. We work directly with the fishermen. So if Joe and Keith are watching, hello, Joe and Keith, or Rose as well. All of them, great people doing really awesome work with their salmon. So super beautiful. Hopefully you make this. Uh, and if you do, like I always tell you, please take pictures because I want to see it. Otherwise, 
we will be back tomorrow with something new and different and we should have some fun. So thanks for tuning in again. Always appreciate it. Stay safe, eat well, and we will see you all tomorrow.